Hey, it's Mike here, and today, fat loss, particularly the science of why a vegan diet gives you a major advantage in achieving a healthier, less disease-promoting body composition. And what I'm most excited about is that we're gonna cover a little-known compound, which is essentially an appetite off switch, which is pretty much missing from everybody that eats a Western diet system. We'll look at research on how that switch actually reduces desire for high energy foods, how to turn that switch on, and so much more, all with some epidemiology sprinkled in. Now, first I wanna mention that fat loss is a sensitive subject, and that's why I wanna look at this from more of a public health angle. This isn't about aesthetics, this isn't about being hot, this is about increasing the amount of years that you could have where your quality of life is good, where you're mobile, and so forth, so let's go. Now, for some background, I could go on and on and on about obesity statistics but something that's still lesser known among people is that vegans average normal BMI. In terms of Western groups, they're the only diet group to do so, and that's been shown in the epidemiology both in the UK and the US, so it's across the board. But what's probably more amazing is all the clinical trials on ad libitum vegan diets that result in weight loss. Ad libitum meaning eating as much as you want. Of course, these aren't processed foods. From this one, we see a notable weight loss after just seven days, and from this study, the Barad study, what the authors described as the most effective weight loss diet at six and 12 months without restricting calories or adding exercise, which is incredible. And for some grade A anecdotes, I know several people who have lost over 100 pounds on a vegan diet, but focusing back on the studies, because that's what really matters, this isn't just theory we're talking about, this is a measurable reality. So why, what's going on here? I wanna emphasize that this isn't the main force at work here, but vegans do have some basic behavioral advantages. If you're just walking into a gas station, going to a party, going anywhere, the chances of a vegan being able to eat cake is just way lower. In the words of Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake, unless they are vegan, then f them. So that is changing, vegan junk foods and snack foods are becoming much more ubiquitous, but the main difference here is the attributes, the qualities of the foods that are making it into vegans' mouths versus other people. And possibly the most powerful body trimming tool in the vegan diet, other than maybe just relinquishing all animal fat, is Fiber. I know, it's just fiber. Yeah, we'll get to the exciting appetite switch stuff in a second, but first we gotta cover the basics. Firstly, in the US, about 97% of people do not get enough fiber, according to the Institute of Medicine. They are fiber deficient. And this is such a simple point, but fiber-rich foods have more volume for the amount of calories they have. And so if we're zooming in on the stomach, we have this network of neurons wrapping around our stomach that go, oh, I've eaten enough volume, my stomach is getting full. Then it sends signals to your brain and says, don't eat anymore. And across the board, animal products are high in energy and fat and low in volume. They are devoid of fiber, and therefore it takes a lot more to fill up your stomach and tell your brain, that you're full. But a diet high in fiber is what our stomach, what our whole system is used to from this study, quote, evidence suggests that for most of history, the human lineage consumed more indigestible plant material, such as grasses, sedges, and tubers, than is present in a typical Western style diet. Over 100 grams per day of dietary fiber compared with less than 15 grams per day in the average modern day diet. But our body's appetite system is much more complicated than just how expanded our stomach is and how hungry we are throughout the day depends on a lot of things. And that brings me to that appetite switch that I talked about at the beginning of the video. And it is propionate. Be amazed. It is a short chain fatty acid, which is ironic because it prevents fat gain, which is created as a result of your gut bacteria breaking down fiber. I know it's kind of a weird word, propionate. My name is Nate, propionate. <laughs> hey man, I just wanna let you know I'm a pro. Oh yeah, pro what? Pionate. Yeah, like a pianist, you play the piano? No, a pro pionate. Okay. Now you'll never forget this word. <laughs> because that's how you remember things, make them weird. That's how they win memory competitions. From this study, quote, in humans, increased colonic production of the short chain fatty acid propionate acutely reduces energy intake. So how does it actually work though? Well, you eat some fiber, the little microbes in your gut digest it, they spit out propionate, and the propionate eventually signals the appetite centers of your brain, the hypothalamus, that you are less hungry, saying, well, you're full now. And from this study, you can actually take an MRI, do a brain scan of somebody and measure the increase in signals to the hypothalamus, the appetite center of the brain, after eating fiber, further suggesting a satiating effect. 
So it appears that this is just part of our natural appetite regulation system from eating so much fiber throughout human history that fiber meant food. But for the average modern person, it's as if we have just taken that out, extracted that system, and people are just missing it. It's almost akin to surgically removing all those nerves around your stomach, just removing a part of the, you, you get what I'm talking about. And back to that study, most amazingly propionate was shown to reduce calorie consumption by about 14% at a buffet meal. America needs this. America needs propionate, propionate 2020. Seriously, if that rate of calorie reduction could be extrapolated to all of the US, then we would bring our calorie consumption back to like 80s levels and looking at this familiar map, it'd be like rewinding it back to about here and that is a very different United States. But the fascinating wonders of propionate don't stop there. It also has to do with our reward system and food desire. This study found that after giving people propionate, their brain reacted less dramatically to high energy foods. So comparing say chili cheese dogs to cucumbers with the propionate, the difference was less dramatic. From the researchers, quote, our results suggest that colonic propionate production may play an important role in attenuating reward-based eating behaviors. Because propionate works with the reward system in this way, it definitely has some implications for food addiction and binge eating. Simply put, if you've had enough fiber in the last 24 hours, then you're gonna be less likely to crave these unhealthy foods. Less likely to reach for foods that you're addicted to, foods that you don't actually want to eat. And I wanna emphasize that this isn't cutting off people's appetite to some unhealthy degree. This is just resetting the system to where it's supposed to be. Now I want to address a concern that I get really whenever I talk about vegan diets and weight loss on this channel, which is completely understandable because statistically there are going to be some more robust vegans. And obviously it's pretty frustrating probably to watch me just talk about how a vegan diet leads to weight loss all the time when it maybe didn't for somebody. But let's investigate this. Firstly, not all vegan foods are created equal. We have the health foods, we have the less healthy foods. And I wanna emphasize just how dramatic that difference is. We can simply compare corn tortillas, regular tortillas to corn chips, which are really sliced up tortillas with oil. Okay, corn tortilla without oil is 11% of total calories from fat and one ounce is about 60 calories. Well, a corn chip, corn with oil, is 55% of calories from fat and one ounce is over 150 calories. That's like three times as many calories. Once again, I have to say it, 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 oil's not a health food. In theory, you could eat almost three times as many corn chips as regular corn tortillas until you get the same appetite triggers, until you get the same amount of fiber and so forth. And this principle of oil plus food equals just way, way, way more calories applies to all sorts of foods. Just cooking foods and oil, fries are just potatoes with oil. <laughs> I'm getting really heated about this. And maybe you do require a higher fat food to feel completely satiated, whether you are a vegan coming off a standard American diet. And so let's compare some whole plant high fat foods versus some animal foods, for example. Let's just compare one ounce of avocado versus one ounce of cheddar cheese, America's favorite cheese. Wouldn't that be American cheese? The avocado actually has 60% less calories per ounce than the cheese, despite having a higher total fat content in terms of macronutrients, in terms of the total percentage of calories from fat, which is actually 77% because of the fiber and because of the water. So not to be a broken record, but once again, whole plant foods are just the best. And moving on to a major concern, I just talked so much about how great fiber is, but a lot of people go, oh my God, if I eat more fiber, then I'm gonna get stomach issues and bloating and stomach pains and so forth. I do have a whole video dedicated to reducing bloating when transitioning to a vegan diet, but I have some new information, particularly from gastroenterologist, Dr. Angie Sadeghi. She was recently on the Nutrition Rounds podcast, a new podcast you should definitely check out. And she made some points that really, really made me think. Well, first of all, she's just a living example of somebody that did lose weight and get super fit going on a plant-based diet. The images speak for themselves, but the point here is that if you want to dodge getting an upset stomach from fiber, when you're transitioning, not only do you need to ramp up the amount of fiber that you eat, but you also need to diversify the sources of that fiber. And the reason for that is that we have a ton of different types of bacteria and they all eat different things. And so if you have a limited amount of pinto bean eating bacteria, then maybe you eat a ton of those pinto beans and you end up with a bunch of undigested material and gas and so forth. But if you split the same amount of fiber in those pinto beans between yams and maybe lentils and veggies, then you're gonna have a bunch of different bacteria that could do the job, hopefully. She also mentioned 
upping the types of plants that you already eat because you probably already have the bacteria to digest those, and that way you can eat more fiber without having a reaction. In the end, as a nation and a Western society in general, we definitely need to eat more fiber to tell our stomach when it's full, as well as to get that propionate and make those propionate gains. And while I think willpower around diet is a subject for an entirely different video, at least propionate gives you a little bit of an advantage in terms of how much you're craving those high fat foods, those foods that are not good for you. In the end, it's about your body using its natural satiation system to know when to stop eating. And I'll go ahead and throw my bloating prevention video in there because there are a ton of points I didn't even talk about in that video. And let me know down below if you have any video suggestions. I'm gonna try and crank out some extra videos through January because that's when a lot of people are like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go vegan. All right, feel free to like, subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell because otherwise you might as well not be subscribed, really. All right, see you next time.